when culture is considered as non-essential, we have chosen to put it forward. The number of listeners today shows how important it is and our need for it. Let's open our minds. We got a unique opportunity with the publication of the book of Jean Bowden and Sunny Winters entitled Mirror. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, let me quote the authors. We shape the world around us in a way we feel comfortable. Cultural practices are internalized preferences. In observing variety, we recognize our own. In interacting, the unknown becomes known. Only by going out of our single context world can we see our own patterns, like looking into a mirror. In seeing the unfamiliar, we encounter the familiar. In mirroring West and East and tracing philosophical roots, we recognize contemporary thoughts and actions, ways of looking at life, at good or bad, efficient or chaotic, right or wrong. Miro juxtaposes the dualistic worldview of the West with the holistic frame of reference of the East. The world juxtaposes looks to me important. The authors do not use the word confront. This is worth to underline at a time when the tendency is to oppose China and the Western world with a feeling of superiority on the other. When you do not know the other's culture, you mistrust him or her. The better you know, the better you understand the other, but you need also to know yourself better. Why did these two artists, the writer and poet, and the illustrator and painter, connect? As the Renaissance writer Montaigne said of his friendship with the poet La Boétie, because it was him, because it was me. Jean Bowden has a PhD in Oriental Languages and a management degree from Solvay Brussels School of Economics and Management. She is the author of many publications, among which more than 10 books. She founded China Conduct and has advised the management of big companies who are active in China. And many of you know China already. Uh, uh, no, uh, Jean, sorry, uh, already Jean, who has uh, been uh, already present uh, to several of our activities as a speaker. Sunny Winters has a master degree in graphic art and has also published several beautiful books, which are each pieces of art. She's part of the creators duo Uyun and Winters. She's working for several magazines and cultural organizations. Jean will start by reflecting on universal questions like what is civilization, how do cultures differ, how do corporate culture differ, how do we look at the reality around us, how do we look at life and death, how do we look at ourselves, how do we look at each other. It is only by stepping out of our own context that we can see ourselves. Her presentation will be followed by a video followed by the uh, speech of uh, Sunny. Sunny Winters will reflect on questions like, how did the book come into being? What was your own process in creating the picture? terms of pictures? How was the cooperation between you? What was surprising for you? What is the message you want to give with this book? And her presentation will also be followed by a video, this all being organized on the occasion of the presentation of this beautiful book. I strongly recommend it uh, to all of you uh, called Mirror. So Jeanne, Mrs. Borden, you have the word. We listen carefully to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. DeWitt. Um, I would really like to start uh, by thanking you and the Belgian Chinese Chamber of Commerce for inviting uh, us, to, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, it's always nice to cooperate and uh, to do projects together, uh, so thank you for that. 
Um, I would also like to thank Sunny for this nice project, but I will come back to that later. And then um, I would like to thank uh, from the bottom of my heart, my friend uh, Peng Jia Yu, uh, who is also joining us today. Um, well, uh, Peng Jia Yu has a PhD in chemistry, but we know each other for a few decades. And um, well, we got to know each other when I was translating Chinese literature. And I discovered that she has a very high level of literary Chinese. So I really work, like working with her. Uh, we developed also some uh, branding, corporate branding together uh, for the Chinese market. And it's always really nice to work with her. So, Peng Jia Yu, xie xie ni. And then I would also like to thank uh, all the participants. Uh, we, well, uh, more than 100 people have registered, we will see. Uh, but it's really nice to see the whole list of people um, and yeah, people from all kinds of walks. And I think uh, this also reflects uh, the connections uh, that China Conduct has built uh, throughout the, the past decades. Uh, we have people from the diplomatic background, uh, company background, artists, uh, and so on, academic people. And um, that is that really fits, um, um, well, my world, I would say. Uh, so I'm going to introduce, um, uh, well, I'm going to say something about myself first, then I will say something about my cooperation with Sunny, then I will say something about the content of the book, um, and then uh, uh, I will sh also show a number of pictures from the book and uh, give some, uh, well, explanation about that. So the people who know me well know that I'm a person of many worlds. Uh, I work for companies. Sometimes uh, I give advice uh, to top management people, usually with an NDA. So that is one uh, of my worlds. But I've throughout my career, I've also uh, worked in the academic world as a lecturer. Currently, the past few years, I'm working for all the doctoral schools from the Flemish universities. Uh, and I really, uh, well, I'm also a researcher in heart and soul. And I think that has also uh, resulted in, well, partly in this book today, because since I studied Sinology, I, I was also interested in studying cultures and cultural differences. Already at the time, I, uh, I chose uh, uh, yeah, for topics like um, uh, cultural studies and so on. So this is also one of my aspects throughout my career. And it is in the cooperation with people from China and from from other places in the East that I discovered, um, well, that a lot of the things that I took for granted, that I should not take them for granted because the logic that I had in my head was not always the logic that other people also had in their head. Um, so it was really by immersing myself very deeply into this world that I didn't know at the beginning that I discovered the more I learned about it, the more I can see myself. And this process of awareness raising and about uh, yeah, gaining insight in my own patterns in my head while explaining to other people uh, potential cultural differences that has really uh, resulted in uh, deep insight. Um, I would also like to say something about my love for the Chinese characters, which was uh, one of the reasons that I started to study Chinese in the beginning. I've been fascinated by the aesthetic value uh, or the aesthetic feel of Chinese characters since I was uh, young. And I still love it. I, it's like a treasure trove that there's no end to it. And I, I still love it very much. Um, and that is also why we chose to, to uh, add Chinese characters, the traditional ones, to the book, because, yeah, it's so beautiful. And uh, also, well, there's no end to the beauty and uh, you always discover new things. Now, um, about the book, well, um, actually, I give a lot of workshops. And in these workshops, I always make drawings to explain to people what is in my head and to, to make things visual. So I had this idea of uh, making a book with about cultural differences and uh, reflections on that. 
uh, in the in with drawings for many years, and then I uh, discovered the work of Sunny um, Sunny Winters, and first uh, I remember very well that I saw the first book um, in Brussels, and I was looking at it. And I think a few months later, I um, I was uh, visiting the Museum of Fine Arts in Ghent, and I saw her one another book by her in the bookshop, and I was just flipping through it, and I thought I, I'm going to send her an email, I'm going to contact her, because this was really the things fell into place, and I contacted Sunny, not knowing what was going to happen, but in my life I've started many projects that I did in this way, so if you don't go out, nothing happens. But anyway, soon after that, um, Sunny replied and we met each other and from the very beginning, we both believed very much in this project. Now, uh, my cooperation with Sunny, because I, I contacted her, I didn't know her, so you never know, is it going to work? But I, I do believe that there is this intuitive, well, if you see someone's work, there, you can see if you, I think if you like it very much, that also says something about yourself and about the other. So I think the work with Sunny from the very beginning, um, it was really nice, respectful, but I think in a way, the two of us also, I think we are a bit alike in our personalities, very demanding towards ourselves. Um, yeah, very uh, the aesthetic, uh, the aesthetic sensitivity, um, perfectionists, I think, but also the demanding. Um, this is something that I know about myself from working with other people. And with Sunny, it was never an issue because she's also uh, so demanding. And I think the work process that we went through was really very balanced and harmonious. We had very intensive interactions, but at no point did we have any real discussion. So we aligned very well. And I think this balance and harmony in our relationships really radiates from the book also. And we call it a book, but I would like to call it a project because it's a project that we worked on. We started five years ago, so it's a project that really matured very much. And um, well, we started from scratch, so to speak. But um, well, every time I would, uh, we would discuss a little bit. Sunny did a lot of research herself, also, but we had a lot of interactions. And every time she made new drawings, I really thought this is really spot on. This is what 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 needs what what we need. And then through the process, because five years ago, uh, the world was looked like a different place, if you look back. So actually, we started this book by uh, China and Europe. And at some point, I had the feeling that everything had become political. And so in the process of cooperating, we really decided that we would uh, remove the book from any political influences or political comments and really bring it to the higher level of poetry and philosophy. And the goal, I think, is the goal of this book is really to let people reflect on themselves. Um, I think the concept of mirror is also very nice um, because, uh, well, it's, it's in many ways, this book is a mirror. Sunny and I, in our cooperation, we uh, mirrored. But I also very strongly, I've seen this throughout my life, that it's only really if you step out of your own context that you can look in, into the mirror. But anyway, the moment we decided to bring it to a more poetic level, um, there were, well, we, we really chose consciously to remove a number of uh, images that we already had created and um, to insert influences not only from China and Europe, but also from other cultures. So we brought it to the level of cultural differences. So in the book, and I will explain that with images also, there's also uh, a number of general categories of how cultures differ and possibly differ. So in the end, the book is not about uh, the East and the West. The book is really about potential cultural differences and how we deal with that and how we look at 
ourselves and how we look at the other. And I think this is also something that I share with Sunny, a kind of engagement with the world. We do care uh, how people relate. We do care um, about, well, uh, uh, having an open mind and being engaged with life. And this is certainly something that we also share. Now, um, the paradox of culture is really that all of us have grown up with certain patterns that we take for granted, but no person can be reduced to a number of patterns. And so it's, it's very uh, enriching, I think, to really engage into uh, other patterns, but uh, you can never just define an essentialist category. And that is also a really nice and interesting idea, I think. Now I'm going to share my screen and um, show you a few um, pictures. Um, I hope this works. Okay, I think uh, this is fine, yeah. Um, so I'm, I chose a number of pictures of, uh, well, uh, some of them are really related to cooperating with other people. Uh, the first one I chose to show to you is this one. One thing that I've seen very strongly in my work is that some people grow up in a debate culture and other people grow up in a more listening culture. And people who grow up in a debate culture, they usually develop skills of eloquent speaking, but very often they're not very good listeners and vice versa. Other people grow up really being aware of the position of others. Uh, they develop high level listening skills, observing, observing skills. And I think this is one of the topics where we, where everyone can learn from each other. Then I chose uh, to uh, this one, um, and well, you, we, I can speak for an, an hour about this, but I will try to limit my what I say about it. Um, as a subtitle, we gave uh, freedom and responsibility to the left one, and protection and hierarchy to the right one. Now, some people grow up looking at themselves as an individual. You learn to look at yourself as an individual next to other individuals with, from a very young age, you can make uh, free choices for what you want in life, but you have to take the full responsibility for these choices. In communication, um, people who grow up very much in an, individ in an individual oriented culture, they will, uh, they will perceive communication as something that is happening between individuals. Other people grow up in um, more group-oriented and hierarchical contexts, and they, uh, well, from a young age, they will uh, develop a high awareness of who am I and who is the other, and in communicating, they will always keep in mind the position of that people have vis-a-vis -vis each other. And this, uh, I think these two images are one of the core images of the book also. Um, well, this in the West, we really learn to think in black and white, something is true or false, something is right or wrong. Um, so pretty much uh, black and white. Uh, and if you say something that is not true, then you lie. So very much the uh, yeah, oppositional thinking. And the yin and yang symbol is really something that I, well, I think it's one of the most nice symbols on the face of the earth. Um, because things are never black and white. Because at the core of white, there is black, and at the core of black, there is white. And this is certainly um, an idea that has influenced me and even my children deeply, because things are always relative. And if you go through a difficult period, the germs and the potential of very new chances are also there. And this is an idea that I really love very, very much. 
And I think, yeah, it's a very nice way of uh, looking at the world around us. Then these two images, uh, this is also really from uh, my work. Um, some people, this has to do with time concepts also that we grow up with. Some people learn to think about time as a line and uh, to pretend that you can look into the future. And uh, well, if you think that you can look into the future, you also think that you can control time. So some cultures tend to plan everything, make year plannings, uh, business plannings, project plannings. They plan ahead and then the actions and the, the time chunks are really divided very neatly. And other cultures, and this image is based on the Chinese saying, you just jump into the water and feel where the stones are. Um, which is a mindset that is uh, reflecting a more flexible approach. Um, and it's, well, you take the opportunities when, as they arise. And this is also the tension between these two is something that can result in huge frustrations when you work cross-culturally, because on both sides, you will have yeah, you will have mutual expectations um, linked to what you have learned uh, yourself. So it's very important to make agreements on this, for instance. Then we have this copyright or the right to copy. This, uh, well, it's a kind of, Sunny is very good in putting humor in, uh, into the book. Um, this is actually not about copyright. I think all the images that we created should be reflected on from a meta level. And uh, this is actually what we want to say with this one, is that if you look on the face of the earth, there are a lot of different legal systems with their own particular things. And we quite often ignore this. And um, well, even in the academic world, um, well, writing, academic papers, um, people expect that others know how, how this should be done and what it all means to reference and all that, but many people don't know that. So the, this, this is really a topic that also results in a lot of frustration sometimes, but I think um, people need to explain um, what they expect uh, the whole time. These two images are really, um, well, there's uh, an anthropologist who writes a lot, uh, uh, well, who wrote a lot, he is not among us anymore, but he wrote a lot about um, how cultures differ in time and space and in communication. And uh, these two images are based on a concept that he uses. So on the left, we see an image of, uh, we, we only see a face, a portrait actually. And on the right hand side, we see, a woman sitting in a room. And this is also how cultures differ um, or pos potentially differ. Some focus very much on the individual and that, that is what is important. And on, in other cultures, the individual will always be perceived as in a context. So the contextual um, environment is very important. And in, uh, in this kind of cultures here, the, the, the girl sits in an empty room, but very often there will be other people around uh, uh, the individual to, well, to contextualize. Then I also uh, chose to discuss this one um, because uh, this is about how do we select a partner in life? And well, um, the, the, again, we, we need to look at these images from a meta reflection. So you select a partner. Here we have three men and one female, and you could interpret this as an, the imbalance that exists in some areas between uh, men and women because of the preferences uh, for, um, for male uh, children. But, um, and this exists in many places on the, on the earth. But research has shown that in some cultures who live in very remote places, that one woman can have different husbands. And this is a concept that, we, that few people know. And these, uh, this is usually in very far out places where the, the woman with the children needs to be protected. And usually the different husbands, they are brothers. 
But this also exists. So there are there's a lot of things that exist in the world that we don't know of, and we tend to, yeah, to judge each other without actually knowing. Uh, and then um, my final one is uh, this one, and it's actually uh, well. We are used to looking at the outside of what cultures do and then attach meaning to it. But I think in the way uh, people eat, you can learn a lot from how they behave in general. In the West, um, we have, um, well, we do almost everything. People who plan very well tend to do everything in a sequential way. And this is also reflected in the way we eat. We have the starter, the soup, the main course, dessert, and so on. So eating is a sequential pattern, while in many group-oriented cultures, all the dishes will come onto the table together and will be shared. And if you are invited in a, in a place where all the dishes are together on the table, the chance is very high that a meeting in such a culture will not have a very patterned, um, uh, yeah, a very sequential pattern, but it will also have another dynamic. So this is also an example of how um, what you how you what you can learn by observing. I, I always throughout my life I always observe what people do and try to find meaning in uh, what I see. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now and I give the floor to Sunny, I think. Um, I think Sunny will now uh, share a video. Jean, will you mute your... Yeah. <laughs> Can you all hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, 
thank you, Jan and Mr. David, for introducing me so uh, nicely. Um, I don't have to do that anymore now. Um, probably I will say um, some things that uh, Jeanne has already told you, uh, but it will be from my point of view. So um, since we're talking in the mirror, that's no problem, I guess. Um, I would like to uh, say some things about some questions that um, arise uh, while making this uh, project. Um, Jeanne contacted me about five years ago and she had seen my previous books, Belgium Extra Bold and Jens Extra Bold. She loved the way I visualized uh, abstract ideas and themes with uh, clear images and colors. And in these books, I also searched for the identity of uh, people. So like the Belgian, who is he, what does he stand for, or the Ghent residents um, and their uh, characteristics. Um, so she told me she would like to work with me on a book about cultural uh, differences. And I was immediately intrigued. Um, so we met at her place. I remember very, very well. Uh, we began working together very intense from that uh, moment um, because uh, not really knowing each other, not knowing exactly where it would take us or how long it was going to take. Uh, it took a bit longer than we thought, I, I guess. And that was uh, very exciting for the both of us. Um, so. Um, I would like also to talk a bit about uh, some images. Um, we decided to make the book in which the visual would play an important role to highlight uh, different themes. Um, and the inspiration for that came from many directions, different directions. Um, as Jeanne said, Jeanne said uh, during her workshops and her lectures, she often uses little schematic drawings for her own, uh, of her own to clarify some things. And some of these uh, sketches inspired me as well to make uh, images. Um, this image, for instance, is a good example of how Jean's uh, little drawing, drawings, doodles, uh, also worked uh, very inspiring. The pyramids drawing she often uses um, and ret uh, that returns, returns uh, while she explains things um, is something I tried to uh, take to another level um, in this uh, drawing. I must say that I have always uh, as well been fascinated with people, um, different backgrounds and how people uh, respond to things uh, differently. But I was not really uh, familiar, familiar with the Asian uh, worlds in particular. Uh, I must be honest, honest in that. So the first thing I realized was that I had to educate myself a bit on the team. And that meant a lot of uh, research, reading a lot, and uh, talking a lot uh, with Jeanne to understand uh, things. Uh, and fortunately, she is a passionate storyteller, so thank you for that. Um, I discovered that uh, Asian aesthetics uh, lay closer to my way of working uh, than I first imagined. Um, for instance, the color red uh, is something um, that uh, became an integral part of uh, the book. And I must say also in our graphic design work and also in my work as a free uh, artist, uh, I often use red um, because we're convinced that a red element in a, in a picture or in an image always uh, draws attention, attention uh, very directly to an image. Um, something else that uh, inspired me a lot um, as well in my free work as in my work as a graphic designer. We're well known as um, people that work a lot with typography, typography. I have a great love uh, for that. So you can imagine my enthusiasm for the Asian writing and uh, characters, um, something you can see in this uh, image as well. Um, on the left side, um, we, um, we took the image uh, counting by drawing dashes. In the West, we count by drawing dashes, one, two, three, four, five. And that inspired me to uh, place a, a Chinese character on the right side. Uh, we discussed about it and it became the, 
uh, Chinese character for correct, uh, also a term used uh, while counting. So. In this image, for instance, um, you have the character from the right side, uh, the Chinese character for, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Shen, <laughs> for double happiness, um, a symbol that is often used with uh, marriages um, in the Asian cultures. Uh, so uh, I combined it on the left side with um, an image of a couple, a young couple in love or an older couple, <laughs> a couple in love. So um, that works also very nicely. Um, something that was very challenging for me uh, because I always work, work with uh, let, uh, uh, type typefaces and typography was to make um, images that were very pure, as, as pure as possible, stripped of uh, everything unnecessary so that the attention was going to the message and the message only. Therefore, I also needed to uh, create a figure, um, a figure that was away from uh, cliché images and uh, a figure that could ser serve both worlds, uh, as well the Western world as the Asian worlds, uh, something you can see in this um, image as well. Of course, I had to empathize with the oriental mindsets. Um, therefore, an image that Shan also already showed, um, this image that was one of the first actually, um, it seems a simple comparison, but uh, for me it was a real eye-opener. All fell to place when I realized uh, the base of uh, the two uh, cultures or uh, worlds, um, the Asian world and the Western world, the dualism and the holism. Um, so um, it was a very, uh, it was an eye opener for me. And I also like uh, the way Jeanne and um, Feng Chaiyu. <laughs> Uh, put the text beneath it. Um, I like I like it when uh, it, this small world, the words, the or and the ends. At the left you have the black or white. At the right, black and white. It's a very small world, but it's a very big difference. Jeanne and I, we sensed each other very well, uh, I guess, um, and we decided that it was uh, important to have uh, equal respect for both the worlds. And the last thing we wanted to do is to pass judgments on one or the other uh, worlds. And that is when we decided to place the two worlds as a kind of a mirror image uh, to each other, as you can see uh, here. I wanted to create the images as similar as possible, despite every existing difference between them, almost like really, really looking into a mirror. And we even pushed it a bit further by doing the same with the text beneath the images. Um, as I said before, as well here, mind or heart or mind and heart, it's a very small worlds, but a very big difference. And I thought uh, Jean and Peng Chaiyu did that uh, very successfully. Jean and I, we also have very different backgrounds ourselves, I guess. Uh, she has a PhD in uh, Oriental lang Languages and Cultures. I have a master's degree in the visual arts. I'm from Antwerp, she's from Ghent, uh, so that's also something else, but we clicked very well, we had a, a nice match. Um, and despite these differences, she, uh, she treated me equally from the start, what was very nice. And we had mutual respect for one another, we spoke freely uh, to each other, and we were open for improvements uh, of images and texts uh, the whole time. And we pushed each other to the limits. So in a way, you could say we also made a book about ourselves looking into each other's uh, mirror. It took us a while to get to the final phase of the book, 
And in all this time, the shape of the book has uh, evolved uh, a lot. Um, first, there was the idea of uh, making the book, the book as a kind of a Ted Bish, uh, a Ted Bish. That means that the one side of the book would be for the East and the other side of the book would be for the West. Um, but then we realized that this way the both worlds would be equally represent, represented but torn apart from each other. So we needed to change that to a more holistic uh, concept. So we came to the mirror concept. And then, of course, um, Oh, I forgot. I forgot to say also the photo, the the binding of the book is uh, inspired to the Asian way of binding, uh, and that's also important because, uh, like that, the book opens very nicely and and it's uh, it um, makes the mirror effects between the pages a lot more stronger. So, um, and then finally. It took us a while to get there, but we're convinced that uh, the time we took was uh, needed and make it, uh, made the result uh, even better. Um, for me, the book is more than a comparison between both worlds. I had the hope it can bring people closer together in general, and that it can teach us how to look beyond uh, differences between us, between uh, men, women, or between different colors and genders, um, between like-minded people and opposites. Um, and like Jean, Jean puts it uh, very nicely, in one sentence, uh, only by recognizing the difference can we see ourselves. That sentence alone for me was a true inspiration while the whole, uh, during the whole process of the book. I'd like to thank you all for listening. Um, and Jan, also, I would like to thank you a lot for this uh, opportunity. It was a nice uh, roller coaster <laughs> for the both of us. So uh, many thanks for that. So I give the words to, uh, I guess, Mr. Bernard de Witt, maybe. I think so. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Winters. Uh, thank you, uh, Sunny. Uh, uh, and uh, I must say that. Uh, for me, what you did is really beautiful, uh, and uh, your illustrations uh, makes us understand so well the cultural differences that uh, uh, Jeanne uh, helped us to to understand. Um, 
but with your visual illustrations, um, it is uh, extraordinary. And I must say for someone who had no special interest in Asia uh, when you started the work, well, I think you know Asia much better than many of uh, 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 China hands, if I may say so, in the Western world. So uh, really, uh, congratulations. Um, I would say that um, we have now a uh, possibility for our uh, audience to uh, uh, to make some remarks or ask some questions through the chat and uh, don't hesitate to, to make uh, use uh, of it. Uh, I had a, a first uh, a question uh, for uh, uh, for Jeanne. Um, when you were speaking of uh, um, planning and pragmatism uh, with the illustration of, of, of Sunny, um, but how would you then interpret, for instance, in the case of China, where you have certainly the, the pragmatism, but you have also the five-year plans in the economy, uh, where it is well planified. Um, and so how would you put that in, uh, uh, in your appreciation? Thank you for the question. Well, uh, what is called the five-year plan is actually not a detailed step-by-step -step planning. The five-year plan introduces big goals that the Chinese government wants to reach. And how these goals are reached is not necessarily prescribed. So they set goals and companies who go along, they, can, they will be supported. And that is how China works very much, I think. But the, the word plan is actually a little bit misleading. It would be, uh, a, a better word would be a five-year goal, I think, which is something completely different than a day-to-day, -day, well, planned agenda and executing what you have planned. Because I think many people in China are a lot more flexible in, in, in the way they cooperate. And it, it's also, it results in different corporate cultures also because leadership is also different. While here you have a project and all the stakeholders or all the people involved in the project will have will keep the planning and the deadline in mind. Why I, I think um, in the Chinese context, um, it's much more and not only China, but many places in Asia, the centralized cultures, you could say, the leader will have a big role. They will make the decisions. And if you look at look at it at the pyramid, the basis will execute, which is a totally different dynamic then um, just a step-by-step -step planning. Is that a reply yep. to your question? Yeah. Thank you, Jeanne. Uh, I was sure you would have the, the right words to, to reply uh, to, uh, to, to it. Um, I, I also noted um, in your speech that you were uh, speaking with the example of, uh, of civilizations where, uh, uh, of, uh, of polyandry, huh, where some, uh, a woman can have uh, uh, several husbands. Well, you, you have also the other way around in some other civilization, you have uh, uh, men having uh, several uh, wives. Um, so um, would you oppose that, these two civilizations? Whew, what, that, is, <laughs> that is not an easy question to answer. Uh, first of all, I'm not a specialist in this. Um, and it's difficult for me to say something really interesting about it because I observe these patterns, but I've not done research myself. Actually, one of my very good friends who is a professor in anthropology, she did the research, but she's not here to reply to you. I don't know if it's as simple as opposing. I, I think the, the reality we live in is much more complex. And the reasons of why one woman would have different husbands and one man different uh, wives, I think the reasons behind may differ very much. So I would not, I think the word opposing is always a bad word when we speak about cultural complexity. Thank you, Jeanne. We have a, a question uh, uh, here uh, uh, to you. Uh, do you think language or language acquisition have played a role in the difference between the culture? And in that case, how? Yes, well, uh, a lot of research has been done on that. And it's very interesting. You find TED Talks also on people that are specialized in that. So um, people have been doing research more than 100 years of how 
the language, the language or languages that we grow up with influence the way we look at reality. And there, there are, well, uh, for instance, there is a group in Australia and this, this group does not use any words in, the lang in, in their language like above or under or left or right. They address everything by north, south, east, west. And these people, they, um, well, they develop a very, very high level of orientation that other cultures don't have. So certainly uh, language has a lot of influence on our brain and, and uh, yeah, on, on how we look at the reality around us, certainly, yeah. Um, Jan and Sunny, we have a practical question. Um, how uh, can people, uh, uh, f where can find, they can find the book, how they could uh, buy the book? Um, maybe you, you could give us some indications. Uh, yes, you can uh, find the book uh, in some some bookstores. In the, I have I have a small list. It's not everywhere uh, that you can buy it, but, but you can buy it as well um, uh, via uh, our website. So I will show you the link um, if that's possible. Um, can I share my screen, or is that difficult? Yes, you can. Yes, sure. Voilà. <laughs> it's a bit complex, the link, but uh, that's where you can find uh, much more information about the two of us. And uh, that's where also is an order form um, and you can order if you want to. But I think, uh, I think the Belgian Chinese Chamber of Commerce will also send out a thank you mail with a link uh, towards the book so people can just uh, order it from there too. Yes. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, you can be sure uh, of that. Uh, we had also a question of uh, uh, several of our listeners uh, asking uh, if they could uh, uh, get uh, um, the PPT. I leave it up to the authors um, to answer to that. Uh, Jeanne or Sani, uh, uh, is there a possibility or not? Well, the PPT is actually uh, part of the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. It's a good idea to share. We will put uh, this recording online mm -hmm. uh, for sure so people can watch it. Um, but, well, I think uh, sharing the PDF uh, would really reduce our project to no. a PDF. And I don't think we want to do that because, mm -hmm. yeah, the book is the result of many years and... and um, it's not only just the book, the paper that Sunny chose and the, the print, the, the level of the print, it's, it's, we don't really want to reduce it to, uh, to a PDF. So, um, but well, I think this, uh, this presentation is recorded so people can always watch that and uh, sure. we would like to look back. Yeah, and uh, I must say that uh, our listeners have the possibility to contact the, the chamber and uh, we will give a, a, a link to the record of the, the speech. Um, you will uh, also, I think you, you told me you were planning also to have something on YouTube, maybe? Well, Jean? we can put oh, this, uh, we can put this recording on YouTube. Yes. Okay. And then so, we can share the link. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we will make sure that all the participants, they have all the information they need. Uh, mm -hmm. So just ask your questions and we will reply to you. So don't worry about it. Uh, you will be able to get it. Um, sure. But uh, well, maybe the, we look at the questions uh, because the book has just been published and we don't know. Um, where people want the book and so on. So, um, but we don't worry, we will look after that. Okay, but anyhow, I invite, uh, don't hesitate to send you, to send us uh, your comments or your questions and we will forward it to uh, Jeanne and Sunny, uh, definitely. I had also a question, a practical question from uh, a listener from China. Could people in China buy this book? Well, we have to look into that, I think, how we're going to practically organize it. Because actually we were, um, well, um, 
we it was very difficult to find a publisher we we were really searching but no one wants to take risks in these days so in the end uh, we published it ourselves and uh, we have to organize how well actually sunny and uh, her husband published it um but yeah we have to find well we, we will we will find ways uh, if people are interested in the book in China, we, we will find a way and uh, discuss how we can organize this in practice. Well, I really be, hope because... Yeah, it will not yeah, be... Yeah, I really hard. hope that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but mm -hmm. make sure, we will uh, make sure that, uh, um, yeah, it will be available. Great. Well, uh, I wanted to, uh, um, to thank uh, all two speakers uh, uh, today. Um, I noted that um, one uh, thing, when you started, Jeanne, you were saying that uh, you had uh, love for Chinese characters and that was a little bit the beginning of your interest uh, in uh, uh, Chinese culture. Um, while uh, Sunny also uh, mentioned her love for typography um, and uh, we showed that when you adapted to the, the Chinese character for double happiness and uh, with the Western uh, point of view. Um, I noted also that uh, uh, Jeanne uh, detailed uh, um, the harmonious uh, work process uh, you both had um, and the harmony in the relationship. We see that radiates uh, in the book. Um, you uh, also wanted to remove the book from political comments and bring poetry to push people to look inside of themselves um, with um, the, uh, the book showing finally the open mind of both of, of you. Uh, the uh, illustrations uh, showed uh, uh, the um, differences uh, between debate culture, listeners culture, uh, freedom and responsibility uh, and uh, compared to protection and hierarchy. Um, you had uh, the black or white the black and white, the right to copy, uh, the copyright, uh, and so on. So many examples. Um, and uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, sometimes also, the, as we say, the truth is in the middle. Uh, we will also find it uh, here when uh, uh, seeing what you, what you write. I, I must say personally that I'm so happy that we had uh, this uh, today because um, it's not often that we uh, can speak about such a piece of art uh, like what you brought. You brought it by your text, you brought it by your beautiful illustrations and I must say Sania, I didn't know about you but now uh, I'm very happy, I'm very glad and uh, uh, I hope we will be able also to follow uh, your future realizations. Um, it's uh, really something worthwhile and I see it for everyone who listens uh, to us. Um, also, your philosophy of both of you uh, is most respectful when uh, you have equal respect for both worlds. Um, and uh, with the uh, word of mirror, uh, which gives the image to each other. Um, I would say that um, we really hope that we will be able to organize in the future maybe some other events uh, with both of you um, because the purpose of the chamber is to uh, make um, a bridge, to be a bridge between, uh, uh, in our case, uh, Belgium and China, uh, but uh, between uh, East and West. I would thank uh, again uh, both of you. I would like to thank uh, our listeners. I would like to, to thank um, our sponsors uh, and especially um, Flanders Investment and Trade of which we are a structural partner um, and uh, I hope you will join us for our future activities. You will receive uh, mails uh, from us. And uh, if you are uh, willing to have more details about the book, write to 